So, yeah, I guess you could say I really am dying to save the world. <sighs> Hello, we're here today with Bill Nye, the science guy, CEO of the Planetary Society, and we want to be talking about his new show, The End is Nigh. Welcome back, Bill. How's it's it going? It's so good to be back. Excellent. So um, talk about what the themes of the new show are and how people can catch them. Well, you catch the show on Peacock streaming, but it also airs or cables regularly on sci on the Sci-Fi channel. So uh, the shows are about disasters and how we, uh, as members of the human of humankind, would address these issues. So classic example of a disaster would be uh, an asteroid impact. Well, uh, the fifth show is about a comet. Imp the difference between a comet nucleus and an asteroid is uh, basically how much water ice is on board. The more water, if it's enough water ice, it becomes a comet. And so uh, that's a, a real disaster that we really need to prepare for. Then we have, uh, as the earth, world's climate changes, we have a situation where all this extra heat is being held in by the Earth's atmosphere, which leads to five enormous hurricanes at the same time. And this is a mathematical or climate computer model possibility. And uh, so we have disasters like that because apparently, when uh, we have, when things in our world are going well, we watch comedies and romantic comedies and it's all just happy. But when things are anxiety producing the way they are right now with global conflicts, global pandemic and global climate change, uh, people watch disaster movies. It's a strange phenomenon, we want more. So uh, we made six one hour disaster movies and the difference between our disaster movies and conventional ones is the first half hour is about the disaster. Things go very badly. In the second half hour, I come back and show yeah. us how things could be great with science. Well, that's what we need. We need Bill Nye to come back and rescue us from these disasters. And so a much better uh, scenario perhaps than Don't Look Up. So um, what are you going to be doing in these shows? What kind of things are you going to be talking about besides the sheer disaster? Oh, well, in the case of the comet impact, how, what would we do about it? We would send a space. First of all, we'd have to find it. Very difficult thing to find asteroids and comets when they are not close enough to the sun to have a tail. And very difficult to find. The old saying is like looking for a charcoal briquette in the dark. <laughs> But you can find them in the infrared uh, uh, with heat. They're just ever so slightly above absolute zero out there. Anyway, what would you do? We'd have find a way to deflect it with another spacecraft of some sort, run into it, use mutual gravity, use lasers, uh, or have a big explosion in space. So these are real ideas that we really present about a, the real possibility of a real disaster. Exactly. And I suppose that's where, for example, the DART mission is going to be coming in in just a couple of months, right, when they get that going. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, uh, I'll be at the International Astronautical Congress, and I will be part of a group presenting uh, about the uh, presenting a talk about the DART mission. Now, we at the Planetary Society have been involved in the DART mission for several years, and it's dual asteroid redirection test. And the idea is, you know, the old saying in physics, I'm sure you do, <laughs> stop a locomotive with a mosquito if the mosquito is going fast enough. And so uh, we're going to run a spacecraft into a small asteroid and see if it slows that small asteroid down enough to have its orbit around another asteroid speed up, so-called dual asteroid test. So uh, we're very hopeful and things are very much on course and on track. But you're going, spacecraft's going uh, seven miles, 10, 11 kilometers a second. And so getting it 
steering it to hit something else that's going about that fast is quite difficult. It's rocket science. It's so, literal uh, rocket science, exactly. So yeah. we'll be trying that. Uh, we'll be very involved in that. We're going to be running an experiment in space. I mean, that's a great thing, right? That's yeah. what we always want to be encouraging. And so um, for the show, what are you hoping that people are going to walk away from? What, do you, what, what, what are they going to get out of it? That uh, to be optimistic, to embrace science, to embrace what we've learned about our world and our place in the cosmos uh, with the process of science, identify, uh, realize that we have identified these potential disasters and then feel empowered to do something about it. And the main thing most of us can do about it right now is vote, vote with the environment in mind. And that's coming right up as well, almost the same time it starts. So uh, mark all your calendars for the fall. It's going to be a busy season in space. And then um, I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about was just for those of us who grew up or who are now seeing reruns of Bill Nye, the Science Guy, the show where you were presenting experiments, uh, space flight, all sorts of ways for people to be getting involved in their very homes. You know, how does this new show compare to the approach that you took before? Well, it's quite different uh, in the approach. Uh, instead of me sh bouncing in enthusiastically and uh, showing you demonstration after demonstration, scientific principle after scientific principle, this has drama. I am acting, acting, and breaking the mythic fourth wall between the scene uh, that we are experiencing where these scientists are in the hurricane center or there's a flood and people are being washed away or there's a pyroclastic cloud coming from a volcano and people are succumbing to that. We go from that to me talking to the camera. And then at the end of each first half hour, each first half of the show, rather, I get killed. I get killed six times. Six and times, like a cat really almost, happy right? About that. Well, a different time in each episode. But then in the second half, I come back and explain how we could prepare for these potential disasters and ha have a wonderful quality of life for everyone if we just embrace science and work together. Well, thank you for breaking the fourth wall and helping us embrace science once again, Bill. Um, it's great to have Bill Nye, CEO of the Planetary Society, back. Thank on you. Thank you, Elizabeth. The objective on the old show and the new show is the same. Change the world. Change the world. Thanks again, Bill. Thank you.